Hey everybody, welcome to your Week in Review. For the week of Monday, February 20th, 2023, the markets were closed on Monday due to President's Day, though we were not off because we learned as a valuable lesson from a great book, Discipline Equals Freedom from Jocko Willink. Your life is every day. This is not a part-time gig. This isn't a punch your clock and go home for the day type of thing. You don't get weekends off. No, there is no such thing as the weekend. Your life is an everyday gig. Every day is Monday, and you might not like that. Me, I love it. To me, every day is the beginning, a new day, a new week, a new shot at life, an opportunity to come out the gate like a man possessed and attack the day without mercy. Today, we are taking scalps. We're putting pressure on. I'm the aggressor. I'm on the attack. And of course, I will get tired. I will get beat up. I will get knocked down and drained. And there will be some bad days, but I will not stop. Learn that lesson from Jocko. Discipline equals freedom. Go out there and get it. Markets reopened on Tuesday and the hits just kept on coming. UMBS were down 48 basis points on the open. 10-year Treasury was up 5 basis points. Pretty clear the market has moved to a whole new pricing philosophy. Headed into the three-day weekend, we knew there was a risk that Friday's rally was driven by position squaring, as in traders basically closing out bonds to cover short positions. Heading into the new week, new short positions are back in fashion. From a data standpoint, a series of stronger Eurozone services, PMIs pushed EU yields quickly higher overnight. Great Greatly adding to the selling pressure, MBS blowing right through floors. We've gone through four different floors in the last five trading days. The market services PMI came in at 50.5 versus a 47.2 forecast. It was 46.8 previously. Investor purchases of U.S. homes fell 45.8% on a month-over-month basis, with the largest declines occurring in the pandemic boom towns such as Vegas and Phoenix. Almost the entire month of February has been a mad dash from the lowest rates in months to the highest rates in months. The whole ordeal can be traced back to several key economic reports with mid-tier reports occasionally piling on. Today saw a surprisingly large reaction to a mid-tier data as in the market PMI. The only way to reconcile the disproportionate reaction would be to add some extra overseas selling from the holiday closure in the overnight session, which we also saw strong PMIs in Europe. At the end of the day, we were down 67 basis points on the day. The 5.5 ended up at 99.56, which puts us below all of our technicals for that 5.5, which puts us down into a new, whole new trading range. We might have to change coupons if it stays down there and we don't get any kind of rebound tomorrow. While rent growth has been slowing, it still rose at more than double the pre-pandemic rate. Rental price gains began to increase near the end of 22 and have risen to by about an average of $300 in the past two years. Annual single-family rent growth is projected to slow throughout 2023, but it will likely not decline by enough to wipe out the gains from the past two years. Big emphasis here is rent growth is slowing. Rents aren't going down. Existing home sales fell 0.7% month over month to a seasonally adjusted annual pace of 4 million units. This is down 37% versus a year ago. The median home price came in at 359000 which is an increase of 1.3% compared to a year ago. Prices rose everywhere except the West. Inventory increased slightly from 970,000 units to 980,000 units, down 15.3% from last year. This is about 2.9 months supply, but only 626,000 of those are available for sale and not under contract. Last month, for time home buyers were 31% of sales and cash buyers were 29%. And on Wednesday, the bonds woke up on the positive side of the bed for once. 5.5 coupon was up 17 basis points on the day early. Bonds began the overnight session with a small friendly correction in Asia. European trading brought it to a volatility, then a move up to even higher yields than yesterday before a gradual rally headed into domestic hours. Investors are waking up to the stark realization that the Fed's work is not done and that interest rates may have to be hiked even higher to cool inflation. And Quarter four of 2022, for the first time since at least 1974 when data was available, the quarterly number of housing units built for rent at 133,000 exceeded the number of single family units built for sale at 126,000. Historically, the only times these numbers came close was during the recessions of 1982 and 2008 2009 when single family production collapsed. Single family built for sale starts are down about 40% from their recent peaks. Built for rent activity is near its 1986 high. 
Federal Reserve officials continue to anticipate further increases in borrowing costs would be necessary to bring inflation down to their 2% target when they met earlier this month, although most all supported the step down in the pace of hikes. Participants observed that a restrictive policy stance would need to be maintained until the incoming data provided confidence that inflation was on a sustained downward path towards 2%, which was likely to take some time, according to the Fed minutes that came out today. The minutes also said almost all officials agreed it would be appropriate to raise interest rates by 25 basis points, while a few favored or could be supporting a higher rate hike. At the end of the day, we ended up being at 99.73, which was up 17 basis points on the day, which basically brought us back onto the map. So at 99.73, that puts us just above that floor of the floors of the floor of the floors. So that very bottom line just barely brought up above that for a bit. We bounced a little higher into that next range, but then it collapsed back down upon itself. So we have a lot of ceilings and only one floor right there. So this is going to be real interesting. Results released yesterday showed that a recent four-day workweek trial in the UK had 56 of 61 participating companies continuing with the policy. Study concluded from June to December, including 2,900 employees from a range of industries, with the average workweek around 32 hours and compensation kept the same. Results showed that 71% of employees reported less burnout, 39% less stress, and 60% better work-life balance. Fewer workers quit or took sick days compared to the same period in the previous year. Among the 23 companies that shared sales numbers, the average revenue grew 1.4% during the trial. In the U.S., legislators in Maryland this week proposed a five-year, four-day work week pilot in exchange for tax credits at participating businesses. So it'll be interesting to see if people start adopting that a little bit more. And then on Thursday, we magically got green numbers in the morning two days in a row. Going to get spoiled here with all this luxury. MBS were up 13 basis points on the open, improved eight while I was writing my morning post, actually. Bonds were modestly weaker in the overnight, but they held inside the yesterday's range. Jobless claims coming in under 200,000 again. Certainly didn't help, but it is likely the in inflation implications courtesy of the PCE component of the GDP data had a bigger impact. Jobless claims came in at 192,000 on a forecast of 200,000. 195 previously. Jobs numbers just keep holding up in there. GDP rose 3 2.2% at an annual rate in prior quarter, the BEA said. The GDP core PCE price index portion of that was plus 4.3. It was 3.9 previous and forecast, so it came in hotter than expected. Personal consumption rose 1.4% again, which it rose 2.3% last quarter, so it rose less this quarter. But people are still spending money, which does not help inflation. Fourth quarter GDP rose 2.7% in the second revision. Third quarter growth was revised upward to 3.2%. Growth was driven primarily by inventory growth, which eh, all that growth is pretty skeptical. Services spending rose driven by housing and health care. Government spending was revised upward as well. Personal consumption expenditures were revised downward from 2% to 1.4%. The PCE price index was also revised upward by 0.5 to 3.7, excluding food and energy. The index rose 0 0.4 to 4.3. Needless to say, not good news on the inflation front. However, we are talking about data that is far in the past at this point. The FOMC minutes shed some further light on the comments by Loretta. Loretta Meester and James Bullard last week. A few participants stated that they favored rising in quotes from the report. A few participants stated that they favored rising the target range of the federal fund rate 50 basis points at this meeting or that they had have supported the raising of the target by that amount. The participants favored 50 basis points increase noted that a larger increase would be more likely to bring the target range close to the levels they believed would achieve sufficiently restrictive stance, taking into account their views of the risk of achieving price stability in a timely way. The comment of a few would typically mean that there was more than just those two, because uh, I would say that a few is generally three, not two. Several analytical financial models have said that the Fed funds rate should be at 8% if we really wanted to kill inflation, so there is some room to say that this is going to go well above 5%. Total value of U.S. real estate fell by 4.9% from its June peak of or 
fell about 4.9%, which is $2.3 trillion from its GDP, according to Redfin. At the end of the day, the 5.5 ended up at 99.55, which put us 22 basis points up on the day. 99.55, that puts us above the second floor, so we have two lines there at the bottom. So we're back on the graph. So at least that's something. We're back on the graph, and when we start looking at this stuff, so you have a floor at 99.845 and a ceiling at just over 100. So we'll have to see how the news plays out tomorrow. Uh, we also got some extra um, real estate news. Luxury home builder Toll Brothers announced earnings after the close yesterday. Earnings per share rose while revenues were up 4%. Okay, their revenues are up while mortgages are down like 70% and they're still bubbling out. So I guess that's a interesting perspective there. Cancellation rate was surprisingly low at only 14%. Gross margins rose, so there's no evidence of price cutting or promotional activity in the luxury space. That was from Brent Nitrate. At the end of 2022, 9.3% of subprime borrowers, those with FICO scores less than 660, wow, I guess in the car space, anything less than 660 is considered subprime. Uh, so, so 9.3% of people below 660 were 30 days or more behind on their car payments. This is the highest rate since 2010 in addition to being squeezed financially. It's probably because used car prices are falling and when used, price, used car prices peaked, some dealers sold vehicles that were in very bad condition making non-payment financially very advantageous and appealing. That was from econ70.com. More pain in the commercial real estate sector, particularly in office buildings. Columbia Property Trust, owned by PIMCO, who you might know as the people that used to own First Guarantee Mortgage, defaulted on $1.8 billion mortgage notes on office buildings in New York, Boston, and San Francisco. Pricey locations, so there like three of them. We are also seeing defaults on mortgages for shopping malls. The commercial real estate sector's pain is driven by rising short term rates. Anyone else floating rates is feeling this pain, and also a sea change in office work. Note the SL Green keeps hitting new occupancy lows. Well, tough for uh, them out there. And also in the mortgage world, Wells Fargo has laid off hundreds of mortgage bankers this week. So now they're laying off mortgage bankers. So, at a time when you need money, you're laying off the salespeople. I guess it must not have been that good. Now we got a post from our sponsor at welldatmakesense.com, learning to write sales copy. So this is the last in the series. In writing copy for advertisement, often you get your ad, your reader in an emotional frame of mind as a result of the environment you have created. Logic is less important. So this is all about writing copy that appeals to the emotion of your reader. Learn more at welldatmakesense.com. Sorry everyone, I think I jinxed us. After two days of being sarcastic about opening the gains, we are opening to a loss. This morning, about the same amount as both of those days gains combined. My bad. MBS were down 36 basis points on the open. Other than divine retribution, bonds were a tad stronger in Asia but lost ground steadily in Europe. To open the US session a few basis points higher, the first move was into even weaker territory at first, but with some hints of ground holding, this, the ground holding could merely be a mini wave of short covering. And then we got the PCE number. So the Fed favorite of inflation, the core PCE, came in a month of over month up 0.6%. Now remember, it's supposed to be up 2% on the year. It's up 0.6% month over month versus a 0.4% forecast as 04 previously. Core PCE prices were up 4.7% for year over year versus a 4.3 forecast. So it's not really going down because it was 4.6 previously. The previous month was revised up 0.2. So actually last month wasn't as good as we thought it was and then this was even worse. Great. Personal spending after adjusting for changes in prices jumped 1.1%, rebounding from weakness at the end of the year. It was also the highest reading since June of 2022. The March Fed Fund futures are now handicapping a 1 in 3 chance of a 50 basis point hike at the March meeting. Note that we will not get February PCE numbers till after the March meeting, but we'll get another look at the CPI and the PPI. New home sales rose 7.4% month over month to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 670,000. This is still down 19% year over year. The median house price was flat year over year basis at 427,500. The average price fell 5.3% on a year over year basis. 
The personal income and outlay number above were confirmed by the University of Michigan sentiment survey. Consumer sentiment rebounded strongly in January, both on a month to month basis and an annual basis. People talk about is there going to be a soft landing, a hard landing, meaning is a soft landing, will we be able to get inflation down without a recession? Hard landing is we get it down with a recession. Now there's talk of expecting a no landing for the global economy. This means that the economic growth holds steady and inflation remains high. This scenario would result in tight financial conditions for longer and could weigh on government debt and risk assets. Economists surveyed by Bloomberg expect the Federal Reserve's peak interest rate to be higher than what they had previously expected. The economists expect policymakers to raise the Fed funds rate to a peak of 5.25 and hold it there through the rest of the year. That was from RobChrisman.com from me.org, which is just me. I think it's going to be higher than 5.25. I don't think that's going to get inflation in handle. Uh, so the PCE inflation data has been relegated to an occasional and modest market mover. In the current environment, traders have been doing whatever they need in response to comparable CPI data that comes out much earlier in any given month. But expectations are made for the PCE data that sings a definitely different tune, such as today's. It matched the decade's high reading at the core level month over month and thus set yields higher. So we had a rough day all in all, despite the unpleasant motivation and the 10 year almost hitting 4%, things could definitely have been worse. At the end of the day, we were down 30 basis points at 99.66, which is about a 14, 15 basis point improvement to the worst parts of the day. Like I said, at 99.66, we are right below that bottom line on the 5.5 graph, which is a ceiling floor, ceiling floor, ceiling floor, ceiling at 99.711. With the 2023 Q1 earnings season almost over, it appears that the net profits for S&P 500 firms will be 11.3%. While this would be the sixth straight quarterly decline and well down from their peak of 13% in 2021 quarter two, it returns profits to where they were calendar year 2019. Despite higher sales prices, elevated labor, materials, energy costs have are being felt Lower profits could lead to reduced corporate investment, lower investor payouts, and layoffs, which is all the things we need in order to stifle inflation. I also got a post from our sponsor at wellthatmakesense.com. This is about the process of converting a normal everyday civilian into a customer is not one to two steps. It's a multiple step process of doing that online. So from Digital Marketer, we have a great series starting of how you convert people from people shopping on the internet, browsing around and looking at things into customers in your pipeline. And it is not one to two steps, but we'll break it down for you in this series. So check it out at wellthatmakesense.com. Next week on Monday, we get durable good orders and pending home sales. Tuesday, Case Shiller price index and the FHFA price index. Wednesday, mortgage apps. Uh, don't even care about those anymore. ISM manufacturing PMI, initial jobless claims on Thursday, and ISM services on Friday. So have a great weekend and check out some of our common sources and influences, particularly our sponsor at Well. That makes sense.com.